What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. And I'm here to tell you that beer is not just for breakfast anymore. All right guys, today I just wanna show you a quick and easy project that you can make on your CO2 laser. It's incredibly easy to design just on the fly uh, and you can make some money with these. All right guys, today we're gonna to be making these. So this has my logo on it, but you could customize this, this to anybody's logo. And then if you flip it over, you've got yourself a bottle opener. So a nice little token to give out with your logo on them. You could custom engrave other people's logos on them and sell them. And it's it's just a super easy project to do. Today, I'll be designing this entire thing in Retina Engrave 3, which is the software for my, my FS laser, my Muse Core CO2 laser. You could just as easily design this in Lightburn or probably any other proprietary software that comes with a a, uh, with the CO2 laser. So I'm gonna turn on the laser uh, and jump into Retina Engrave 3. If you guys don't know, Retina Engrave 3 works locally over your Wi-Fi or you can hardwire it. But when you're working in the, in the software, it's also storing that information on the actual unit. So we have to have the laser on while we're designing. So we'll, we will have a little bit of background noise. So this design is actually in four pieces. So here's to kind of give you an idea. We've got the top piece, which is a solid circle with, the, with our logo on it. Then we have two pieces in the middle that just have this little cutout in them. And this is so when you go to put a bottle in there, you have enough room for your, uh, the cap to catch on the, on the opener. And the last one's gonna be a circle. And this one goes on top of this guy. And what this does is this gives us enough area in here to be able to screw that bottle opener into there. So as you can see, I mean, it's just a couple little geometric cuts. Nothing but a chicken wing on a string. Now, let's get to work. Okay, so we're just gonna come in to Retina Engrave 3. We'll start a new project. And just to keep this straight, let's call this uh, bottle over. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up and we're gonna make a three and a half inch circle. I do that by holding shift while I pull this out. And then I'm just gonna come over here to size, make sure these two are linked so it stays a circle and hit 3.5. I've measured the bottle opener, but let me just make sure. Bottle opener is one and a half inches. So in this first one, we're gonna one, one and a half inch circle in the middle of here. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna come up, circle, pull one out, 1.5. And then I'm gonna bring it in here. And if you don't get this to snap into the center, if you select both of these by holding the shift key down, you can come over here and you can just say center and center. So that's a line middle and vertically and horizontally and it'll put it right in the center for you. Okay, now I wanna copy that circle. I'm gonna bring it over here. Now the box that's gonna go in here, I know I want it to be an inch by an inch and a half, I think. Let's go check. An inch by an inch and a quarter. Okay, so I'm just gonna select this guy. I'm going to uncheck this. So I want it to be 1.25 across, and I want it to be one inch tall. Really go either way. Okay, I'm gonna put that back on because I usually like to keep that on there. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put this in the center. We're gonna select our outer circle and then we're gonna align, align, and it'll put it right in the middle. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys and I'm gonna group them because I wanna make another one. I'm just gonna drag it over here and that's gonna be our third level. All right, and then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it over here. So this is what we're looking at. So the design is done as far as we're concerned. I'm gonna group these just because I wanna. Um, and then I'm gonna put these, you can go in here and label these if you want to. It doesn't really, it's not really gonna affect anything. I'm putting them in order because I'm a weirdo. Okay, so right now, like that's how simple that was to design. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab um, a copy of my logo. I'm just gonna do that one. Bring that in, is that a PNG? That is a PNG, okay. All right, so I'm gonna grab this guy. I uh, want this to be a little smaller than the whole thing. So we're gonna go 
uh, 3.25. Bring it over here, put it in there, and then again, we're just gonna grab the outside too. We're gonna center, center, and there we go. Okay, so this is gonna be a raster and we want that to run first. Okay, so let's set the raster first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep it half tone because we just, it's, it's a black and white image. We don't really wanna mess with the, the detail. I'm gonna bring the resolution to five, uh, 500 DPI. Uh, I'm gonna set my power to 50% and my speed to 30%. And I'm gonna leave the rest of these guys the way they are. Okay, now, for the cuts, come in here, and normally I would come in here and just do the, the eighth inch hardwood stock. Actually, that's what we're gonna do, I'm sorry. Um, so that's gonna be 30% power and 100% speed. Okay, so the material I'm gonna be using today is just eighth of an inch walnut. Um, and this is just like a little project panel. You guys ask me where I get my wood from. Uh, my hardwood I get from this place, I, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce that. So I'll put it down here. I'll link it in the description as well. Um, but they sell a good selection of eighth inch material that's already kind of sized for projects. And this is walnut. This is not uh, walnut plywood or anything like that. This is just straight up walnut. Hardwoods will cut a little bit better than plywood because plywood has the glue in between the plies and glue actually dissipates heat. So if I like to, if I can, I like to work with, with a solid wood sheet and not a, not a ply. Little secret when you're focusing your laser and you're gonna be cutting, I go ahead and focus it, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this just a little bit because we really wanna kind of focus a little bit more towards the center of the wood and it's gonna let you, you're, you're gonna see better cuts that way. A little tricky poo there for you. We're gonna get this thing lined up. Okay, I'm just gonna run a perimeter real quick. All right, everything looks good. Uh, estimate uh, job time. Let's see, it looks like it's gonna be about 14 minutes. All right, here we go. Okay, now that we have our pieces, um, you can, and with, like with the birch one, I did go in and I sanded the edge down. Um, but with this one, I think I'm gonna leave it dark like this just because I think it, I think it contrasts well with the walnut. To do this without having to clamp it or anything like that, basically what I'm gonna be using is some CA glue and some wood glue. So I will put like a couple drops of CA glue on there and then we'll put the wood glue in there. The wood's gonna give us stability over time. The CA glue is gonna give us stability in the moment. And I'll be using Starbond CA glue. If you've been around for a minute, you know that they're kind of the, the go-to CA glue. And I also am affiliate with them and I can get you 20% off your order. So I'll put like their information uh, down on the bottom of the screen um, and link it in the description as well. Feel free to, to use me to get your 20% off on your products. Let's use a little clear lacquer. I know somebody's gonna get mad about this because it's walnut, but you want it to be kind of durable too. So deal with it. Okay, and once that's had time to dry, we're now gonna assemble the hardware. Um, these guys, uh, I picked up off of Amazon for a couple of bucks, they're pretty cheap. I think I picked up like 10 or 20 of them. Uh, I'll link to that down below as well. That it really matters, but I always like the, the bottom of that to be where the teeth are. So I'm gonna just a little bit of CA glue and I've got a little squeeze out in there, but you're not gonna ever see it. So I'm not too worried about it. This guy's gonna drop right in there. Another slightly unnecessary step as I was give myself something for the screws to grab onto. Screwdriver. And just screw these guys in. 
All right, guys. And as always, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please consider subscribing. I'm getting, I'm zeroing in on 100,000 subs and it would just be awesome to hit that this year. And an extra special thanks goes to all of my patrons, especially my top tier or Boilermaker patrons, Stephen Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Jim Carter, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Christopher Walters, and Todd Stewart. If you haven't had a chance to check out my Patreon page, uh, I will leave the link down below. Go check it out, join up if that is your thing. Now on to the final product. Okay, so you guys are kinda, I already showed you this one a little earlier. What do you think about the birch? I did go ahead and sand that down. This is plywood, so you get kind of that ply effect on the side. Then here we have our finished walnut, which I really like. I like the contrast in this one much better. Feels really good in the hands. What do you think? Cool? Ooh. Okay, so real quick, let's break down the price. Um, the project panel that I bought was like 16 bucks, but you can get about three of those out of there. So you're looking at about six bucks in wood. Um, the stainless steel bottle openers, apparently I got raked over the coals and bought like 10 for $20, but I found packs, if you, if you wanna buy, if you wanna invest in 100, uh, you can buy 100 of those bottle openers for 45 bucks, which makes your cost on that 45 cents per ring. And then one other thing I thought about that I didn't do on these, just because I don't have them in stock, is maybe putting a couple of magnets on the back of this so you could stick it to the fridge. So I went ahead and looked up, I'll link all the stuff below too, but I went ahead and looked up uh, uh, two millimeter magnets. You can buy 100 for eight bucks. It's like 16 cents in magnets per unit. You're looking at about six, seven bucks with consumables. Um, in materials, the runtime was about 15 minutes. I've seen these, I actually haven't seen any that you can personalize, but I have seen these online uh, going for like anywhere between 13 and like 18 bucks. That wasn't customizable. So if you add the customizable option, you maybe can sque squeeze like three to five bucks more out of each one. So let's say you go 15 and another three for customization. That's 18 bucks. We have what, seven bucks in material. That's 11 bucks a unit. This tells me you can still put a discount for bulk orders and still make, uh, make a decent amount of money per unit. All right, guys, which one did you like better? Did you like the birch or do you like the walnut? Let me know in the comments down below. And after you kind of master being able to do this, then we can start talking about doing something more like this. So that's like an inlay. And then I haven't put that in there yet, but, um, this is another little way to do this. This is kind of a prototype, so it's kind of falling apart a bit. But um, what do you think? Diggy? Diggy, diggy, bop. <laughs> so let me know if you want me to do something like this in a future video. All right, guys, until next time, thanks for playing. And now I got to get to work. But you could design this in Lightburn or whatever Slow Forge has. You could do it. I'm sorry, did I say Slow Forge?